One commonly tested idea on the USMLE is that patients without a spleen, so either through splenectomy or through infarction, such as in sickle cell anemia, these patients tend to have a problem fighting encapsulated bacteria. And this can oftentimes result in sepsis and overwhelming infection. So you might ask, why is it that people without a spleen have a problem fighting encapsulated bacteria in particular? The answer is that because the spleen is such a large powerhouse for these initial interactions between B cells, T cells, and antigen presenting cells, it's a very important place where the initial immune response occurs. And the initial immune response, as we'll learn in a few minutes, has a lot to do with the production of IgM, which is the initial antibody produced in the immune response. IgM is what fixes complement. And complement, in particular, complement factor C3b, is really, really important for fighting encapsulated bacteria. So without IgM being produced in the spleen to be able to activate complement, and hence C3b, you have a very hard time fighting encapsulated bacteria. And the ones that we include under this category of encapsulated bacteria tend to be Salmonella, Strep pneumo, H. flu, and Neisseria meningitides. One other important thing to realize about the spleen is that once patients have had their spleen removed, there are several telltale signs that they've had it removed. One is you'll see thrombocytosis, so a very large platelet count. The reason for that is usually the functioning spleen is removing a number of platelets all the time from the bloodstream. So without that, you get a, a bump in the platelet count. In addition, what you'll see in the red blood cells are called how jolly bodies. And how jolly bodies are just little pieces of nuclear remnant that usually would get cleared out by the spleen. But without a spleen, they stick around inside the red blood cell and you're able to see these nuclear remnants. And we call them how jolly bodies.